Hello and welcome to week 18. This is Ludmilla Adams from Fashion Chalkboard. You're watching one tip of the series 52 weeks of fashion sketching in Adobe Illustrator. And this week we are going to learn how to create a gingham easy peasy one right here and it's really flat. And then I'm also going to give you some tips on how you could make it look a little bit more textured just like this one right here and explain the reason why it would work that way the way that the gingham is actually woven. I hope you really like this tip and you can download this file right here which comes with the actual swatches so you can take those apart and the link is below the video and you can just go to the free member area on Fashion Chalkboard. All right, let's get started. What I would do is just, um, perhaps so we don't need to look at all this, is create an empty layer or if you just create a new document. And for this, I really like to work with a couple of options inside of my view, which is the grid. So you can go to show grid and you can also go to something here called snap to grid. So then when I draw, it snaps to the grid and I'm going to create this a little bit bigger and exaggerate. For a gingham, what we usually have is a couple of things here, which is one little white area. So white on white is kind of hard to see, but with the grid, we can actually see that it's covering it. Now, once I do this, I can just option drag or alt drag to make a copy of this. And I'll just fill up these four right here. And then I can go into coloring. And all I need to do is pick a color that I'd like. So let's just say I pick this one right here. And then um, maybe you shift click on these two with your selection tool and I drop these and then what I can do is I can go onto this fill right here and decide if I manually want to kind of see where I want this other color tone to go. What I like to do sometimes is also just change the opacity to maybe something like 75. Let's see what that does. Um, if I think this looks good in a repeat, 50 is also a little bit more pale. So let's see maybe something in the middle 60. When you do this, um, you can actually see through. So what you can do is click on these, copy paste to front, which is command C, command F. Um, maybe move these out of the way just for a moment. And then the ones on the bottom, just give them a white. No stroke, you wanna make sure there's no stroke on these and then you just move them back. And the great thing is when you move these back and forth, um, you can see how it kind of holds onto the grid snaps to grid, right? And then what we want to do is finish this up and go open up our swatches. And you can see all the swatches that you're gonna get with the free file. I'm just gonna click and drag over this, drop this in here, and then it's time to test it. Um, zoom out, you wanna create an area that's bigger than your actual art that you just did for the repeat. I'm just gonna throw a little rectangle on here and you want to make sure you switch this fill to be on top because otherwise you will only see the stroke or you won't see it because it's um, the pattern inside the stroke. So, and then we'll test this. And how does that look? Looks pretty good to me. And we can also scale this so we can go to our scale option and we can just with tilde and with shift click and drag. And I'll link to another video where I talk about the tilde key so you guys can practice this and understand this a little bit better. All right, and we can also take out the snap tool at this point. Oops, I added one. Take that out. And if we want to look at this without the grid, we'll hide it. And that looks pretty okay to me. Now, um, if you want to be more accurate with colors, you could also go to view swatch library and maybe bring out your color books such as Pantone. Let me just do solids here. And you'll see how my color option right here, if I click on a regular swatch, it doesn't really give me um, options to add white. But if I click on a Pantone color, you can see here how we can now change the color to have maybe 50% of that. So more accuracy, more control if you work with some of your color libraries. Okay. Now I wanted to take this up another notch and um, show you guys how I created these swatches right here. And you can experiment with this a little bit. So what I did here, you can see is add a scribble effect on top of a white. So if I 
click on this and ungroup. You can see if I take this apart that I have a white in the back and then the color on top is actually the same exact color but because it's scribbled onto the white it gives me a lighter version of that and that's kind of simulating how it would be manufactured when you are using white thread and the same color thread and they mix up together. All you need to do is start with the same kind of layout that we had right here. So I can just take the same color and then we're gonna go to effect, stylize, scribble and it's set up the way that I had it and um, so I'm just gonna leave it that way but you can play around with it so I did a 30 um, degree angle centered really small small variations here um, you can see how when I make the spacing even tighter if I have my preview on that there's no white sh coming through or if I make it really loose that we don't see anything anymore so play with that however you like and then um, I can actually copy option drag it over here and you can take my file apart and see what else goes into this now the one thing that's a little bit more complicated and that you might not necessarily understand <laughs> is that we need to put something on here which is called a no fill no stroke box so that our edges are becoming seamless now let's see maybe um i can do this with this one here and it won't give me a gap but um so let me just unlock everything object unlock make sure everything is coming with me because right now if we count as we have one two three four for the white five six pieces with the scribble and i'll drag this in here and then when we test this out you can see how there is a really big gap between the scribble and the edge of the square. And if we click on the one that I created previously, you can see how that gap is almost not there. And that has to do with um, the no fill, no stroke box, which pretty much cuts it. But it has to be exactly in the order that I tell you. And it's just a command that Illustrator understands. So we have to have a no fill, no stroke. And when we draw with the area, we want it to be smaller so that we're kind of cutting this. So I'm just going to go somewhere like that. And then the complicated part is that we're going to have to send it to the back object, arrange, send to back. And you just have to trust that it's there. If you don't trust it, maybe give it a fill. And if you don't see it, it's obviously in the back. Otherwise, it would be in the front. But don't forget that you need to take it out, all right? Otherwise, it won't work. Okay, so I'm going to grab all of these now, which are now seven components, if I count it right. Drag it in here, and then let's look at that one. Okay, so if I zoom in, you can see this is with the cutting box, and this one's with the gap. All right, that's a lot of information. I hope you guys are able to digest it. Um, this has more to do with textile design, which is something I wanted to say for another series of things. But let me know if this is helpful to you. And um, let me know if you have any questions. I hope you liked the video. Subscribe. Maybe let me know what you created with this. Once again, flat sketch 52 on Instagram if you want to share this with me. And thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.